Okay, so this, this paper is called uh, The Curious Case of William and Scan in the Case of uh, Business Ethics. So this paper is in draft, so if you have any comments, I'd, be, I'd love to hear them. So what Niskanen said when he was asked to write the memo for Ford Motor Company, he responded by saying, a common commitment to refrain from special favors serves the same economic function as a common commitment to refrain from stealing. So this idea of tariffs as theft comes from Gordon Tullock. Gordon Tullock, who co-wrote the Calculus of Consent with James Buchanan. Buchanan won the Nobel Prize for Public Choice Economics. Tullock was a co-author of that. He was a, 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 an attorney with the State Department. He got interested in economics because he was serving at the State Department during the Chinese Revolution. So I, I've researched the Scannon recently over the summer. I, I met uh, I met Gordon Tullock once. Uh, James Buchanan I interacted with quite a bit, but I could not find any direct link. So here here's the Scannon saying stealing, and Tullock the welfare cost tariff monopoly theft. And I couldn't find anywhere where Buchanan was referencing Tullock directly on trade. So the motivation for my research is that I'm interested in interdisciplinary research regarding economic and social history of the United States. And the, the scan is very interesting. Uh, my MBA advisor at the University of New Mexico worked for William Niskanen under Reagan's Council of Economic Advisors. So on the one hand, Niskanen is an establishment figure, educated at Chicago, Harvard, faculty member at UC Berkeley, where he put together the Center for Study of Public Policy. He was a defense analyst at RAM, assistant director in Nixon's Office of Management and Budget, chief economist of the Ford Motor Company, and a member of Reagan's. He was the acting director of Reagan's Council of Economic Advisors for six years, uh, six months. Uh, trickle, <laughs> trickle down economics. The Scannon was, uh, he, he wanted, he didn't like deficits and, and he didn't like war. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, actually, well, yeah, we'll get to that. Trick on economics, which is tax cuts, right? Yeah, he, he didn't think the tax, he thought the tax cuts were too complicated. But on the other hand, the Scannon is an idealist in my class. Fired by Nixon OMB for this, discussing dishonest fiscal reporting. So he, the, Nick, the Nixon administration would say, oh, we're almost running a balanced budget, but it wasn't true at all. And so he became very skeptical of the data coming, the values and data coming out of Washington, D.C. And there's this famous quote where he said, uh, there's this famous quote where he said, uh, I'm not even sure that man walked on the moon. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm not even sure man walked on the moon. The Scannon became very skeptical of Washington, D.C. But we'll, we'll get into that more. So he's a, right. So he, he got, back to your question. So, so he got fired from Ford for not supporting trade protection. And then he, Treasury Secretary, over tax policy, the trickle down tax cuts, he said it was just overly complicated. And then all these special interest break, tax breaks, not least of which is the write off of the tax. horrendously sort of. And then, I'll be 
I was the chairman of the Cato Institute for 25 years. And the Cato Institute, we'll get to what that is. So I've, I've read in my literature review, I, I went over all of these things, try to find a direct relationship to Niskanen and Gordon Tala. This is his most famous work, Bureaucracy and Representative Government. Um, the Churney's Welfare and Warport, Wealth, Warfare, Welfare, Administrative State, Churney State. So he was interested in bureaucracy. And since then, a lot of work has been done in the way, the way to get over and correct Americans' two party duopolistic debt creating, hate mongering two party system is to have uh, representative proportional democracy, proportional voting, proportional voting. You get a uh, plurality of political parties. So these, these are the uh, works I reviewed, but I could not find a direct link between Tullock and Niskanen on trade. So here's, here's uh, an insight of the account of the policies of the people of great economics that the triple down. I'll look in the index of the triple down. Here's his most famous academic you know one, and this is one he wrote when he was 75 years old that contains a lot of things in it. So I couldn't find any direct uh, reference between the two, but the, you have stealing and theft, so. So now we're gonna look at, back to the, uh, what we're talking about in terms of rent seeking. So Tullock was the first one to show the uh, dead weight. Well, Tullock was the first one to say that Uh, to say that, oh boy, how do I stop sharing? So this part, like I said, this dead weight loss here is known as the Har Harbinger Triangle. Harbinger Triangle. And then when you add the loss of produces surplus, then you get the dead weight loss, which is now part of mainstream vernacular. But Tullock said, so this right here, this, now the price is above the ideal, the market price, the, the perfect competition price. And now you'll see that this here, this is a transfer from consumer surplus to producer surplus. Because the price is higher, the producer is getting all of this consumer surplus. So this transfer is known as today is known as monopoly profits or super profits. Does everybody see that? So Tullock said that this this is called also known as the Tullock rectangle. And so today we call this the surplus transfer or the above normal profit due to monopoly behavior. But Tullock has a different idea what that means. Had a different idea of what that means. So Tullock comes up with the original formulation of uh, the dead of the surplus transfer or the Tullock triangle. And then that be, became mainstream with the political economy of the rent-seeking society by Hank Kroeger. However, even though Tullock and uh, Buchanan don't, uh, Tullock and the Scannon don't reference themselves directly on trade, we know that they're working together at the same time Tullock's writing his paper.
So theft is lobbying for special treatment under law. And what he finds is that when different firms lobby to get this above normal profits, that it's a, a, a dead weight loss. Under perfect competition, the cost of the competing firms lobbying for special favors is a wash because it's an arms race. But those of us who are a little more radical like myself, when I showed you the solar panel example, now under public choice economics, we just call this above normal profits or super profits or, or rent seeking rents. So originally you had the Harbinger triangle, which is now the dead weight loss. Now Tullock then says that these above normal profits are uh, a loss as well. So state intervention in terms of rent seeking can cause more harm than previously understood under Tullock's formulation. This is when I looked up, again, I just did all this research over the summer. Tullock triangle or Tullock rectangles, it says quadrangles, or it should be rectangle. Tullock rectangle, Google images, and this is the first one that came, came out. And then my, my addition to this research is classical economics, whereas if you look at the economy as reproduction plus surplus, then uh, you're losing more than surplus. You're losing actual standards of living. So here's the original Harbinger triangle. Harbinger triangle. Here's an expanded version, which is in Mancuse textbook as a dead weight loss. Here's the Tullock rectangle, which is now known as the surplus transfer or above normal profits or what Marxists call monopoly, uh, uh, super profits. You have a question? Should I keep going? And then here's my contribution. Here's the dead weight, or here's the loss in absolute standards of living. So now we're going to talk about Niskanen. Are you saying that increased intervention leads to decreased standards of living? Of course. Yeah. Not least of which is witnessed by the dead weight loss. And then here's, here's the rent seeking above normal profits through the prevention of competition. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Welcome. So I put this in a dynamic setting instead of a statics as it's usually done. You get the shift back and here's the solar panel example. We just looked at the OPEC example. You get a price increasing, the surplus transfer, less volume transacted and a loss in absolute standards of living. So Niskanen was fired by Nixon for uh, pointing out dishonest budget reporting, fired by Ford for not supporting trade barriers against Japanese automobiles, and quit Reagan's Council of Economic Advisors because their tax policy was lame, not what it was built. After quitting the Reagan administration, Niskan is chairman of the Free Market Institute called the Cato Institute, which had built it. I've been giving the Cato Institute $100 a year since 1989. It's a libertarian, which we now call classical liberal. Libertarian is a political party. So we, those of us Hayekians, just call ourselves classical liberals. Uh, they, they've called themselves market liberals or peace and prosperity and fiscally conservative and socially liberal. I've been privileged to serve as the chairman of the Cato Institute. So, and then what does it say? For the past 10 years have been very productive for both Cato and me. 
Cato has developed into one of the nation's most effective policy institutes and has maintained a consistent commitment to the principles of individual liberty, free markets, limited government, and peace. Principles that have led us to be increasingly critical of the Bush administration and congressional Republicans. The sad prospect is that these same principles will probably lead us to be increasingly critical of the coming Democratic administration and congressional majority. While at, while at Cato, he's arguing against our interventions. So today's 9-11, why, why did one reason for perhaps the 9-11 attacks is because um, the United States had troops in Islamic holy lands. So there's a new uh, institute created called the Niskanen Center. And this is one of my favorite new books called The Captured Economy. How the powerful and rich themselves slow down growth and increase inequality. Rent seeking special interests. What is seen and what is not seen, dispersed costs and concentrated benefits. So any questions on that, comments on that? So I'm gonna stop recording. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so what was your question again? Oh, okay, so you start out with uh, perfect competition. Yeah, supply and demand, then in order to penalize this monopoly behavior, and we'll be looking at this when we look at the Marshallian cost curves, which uh, uh, is part of our part of managerial economic production function. So here's the original supply, perfect competition. Then OPEC produces less in order to shift back supply in order to make the price higher in order for the West to have to pay more for gasoline. And the same thing here, you start out with perfect competition, then the, the cartel, any, any the, the, the mainstream model of any type of monopoly power, you amazingly shift back supply to get above normal profits, and, right? If you really have monopoly power, you produce as much as possible, but this is the mainstream model that regulatory economists use. So this is a critique of that model. And so here's supply shifts back, here's the new, price here, the new price here, meeting demand, then the, the quantity shifts back. Right, so here's, here's the new supply meeting demand with the new quantity and the new price. Does that work? All right.